Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 12 already, verses 1 through 5. So let's see what it has. Now Samuel said to all Israel, Indeed, I have heeded your voice and all that you said to me, and have made a king over you. And now here is the king walking before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And look, my sons are with you. I have walked before you from my childhood to this day. Here I am. Witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? Or from whose hand have I received any bribe with which to blind my eyes? I will restore it to you. And they said, You have not cheated us or oppressed us, nor have you taken anything from any man's hand. Then he said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found anything in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Samuel is still smarting a little bit from this transition from the judges to, we want a king like all the nations to judge us and go in and out and fight our battles before us and win our battles. Saul just did that. Okay, good. They've kind of finished now with Saul. He's been anointed and crowned kind of a third time here. And this is kind of where Samuel's going to begin to step aside, although we're going to see he's going to be right back with the big problem that Saul faces. Saul will increase, Samuel will decrease. But what we have here is Samuel just pointing out to the people. Now remember, and we're going to see that further on in this chapter, kind of in a grievous way. Samuel is pointing out that it wasn't because of a fault in Samuel's leadership that they got a king. That wasn't the reason why. The reason why was because the people were determined to have a, a gladiator-type champion to go in and out before them and fight their battles for them. And it's because the people wanted to change the way of governance. Sometimes we're dissatisfied with the way of governance in the church. We want to change it. We want to ignore large things that a whole groups are connected to. We want to just go off and do it our own way. What kind of be local? You do your thing, I'll do my thing, and we'll, but we'll all be the same church. doesn't work that way. If we're going to be united, we've got to be united in the Lord and in his truth. So we, we go by what the world church decides. We each have our part, and we trust in God's leading. Sometimes that's hard to do, and sometimes I don't think it's guaranteed that the church always makes the absolute right decision. But, you know, we try to go together, and let's let the Lord be king on his throne. This decision, you know, to have a human king, we know. We already saw it. This is not the best, God's best will for them, but we're going to do this, God said. Let's go ahead and do this, and, and we'll all have a learning experience here. So let's, let's not ever be too quick to throw out the idea that God is still leading through the leaders of his people. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we are in a, a, a wild time. This story we've just heard about the big battle with the Ammonites, that was kind of a wild time. And now Samuel is just making it clear that there's it's not because of corruption that the, we've moved from the time of judges now actually to the time of the monarchy. So Lord, again, we, we look to you. Provide godly leaders for us. Help us to be wise about those leaders and help us to follow, follow your leading of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God be with you today in all that you do.